So you're recording, right? Yes. Okay. Full screen. You get rid of all the video. And um, that's Mike. Okay. So um, I'm going to be on my little wheelie chair. I love the wheelie chairs. Okay. So um, Tyler, do you want to share your screen? We're going to come to you. Okay. So, Tyler, go back to that spreadsheet, to your actual spreadsheet. Uh, I don't remember where I put it. Yeah, probably in Google Docs. And here you want to open up spreadsheet too. I think what I'll do is, and that's the one that I gave you. This is the one that, uh, this is like, I copied the template and then I uh, used, used it on a different document and I changed the uh, okay the shapes and put a different uh, color in. Pop up tag you were using another spreadsheet, right? Yes. Yeah, so, um, so, so we're going to shift gears a little bit, um, but let me, I want to address your question here. So what was your question about what to do with this? Did, did I like, um, did I do this right? Like, is this what it's supposed to look like? Okay. Um, so let me shut this. Um, and James, you're pretty confident my voice is going, right? Oh yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Right now. okay. So, um, and if we're hearing all the speakers coming out of your computer. So maybe turn your volume up a bit because I'm in a little trouble hearing Tyler. Okay. Um, so f did you do it right? Um, yeah, I, yes. <laughs> I hate that question, though, because I always want to know, well, what were you trying to do? And you're just trying to do what I was doing, right? So in the next step, we're gonna, you're going to go a little further. But, so explain to me, read to me this, this table that you've created. What's happening here? Um, um, I uh, I ended up taking uh, your uh, the template that you gave us and I switched the shape and the color around and I added um, different uh, different colors and I think I kept the green just as a basis and then I added blue gold and red for yep. some reason I don't know why I added gold and then I just went to the website that uh, that you like showed us for all the, like the free things and then I just like found like a bunch of like um, like a bunch of random um, images. But when I took this template, that all this in, and then I uh, put it in here, everything was like like an error code in the, uh, in the formula because what had happened was since it was from your sheet and it wasn't the sh same sheet that I had, it was a, a different um, code like, uh, or like this, like this, showed up as a error um something like 117 uh -huh. and what had happened is i had to uh, go through and click on each one of these individually in order for the the code to correct itself okay so those are those are spreadsheet errors yes okay but as soon as you fix them yeah okay good hey um That broke my whole concentration now. I now have no idea what we were just talking about. Um, it looks to me like your spreadsheet is working. Go down to C13. Let me see the code in C13. That's A13. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's, um, and that looks good. Um, yeah, so what makes C wider so that you can see the code of it? Go ahead, yeah, there you go. Um, so what you're doing here, 
Okay, what sheet two is doing, and, and in the next version, I relabel sheet two to be um, Tiddler, right? So you're going to, you import this, and you're writing a series of how many Tiddlers when you import this sheet? I think 16. I see more than that. You're going to have one Tiddler for every line other than the first line. How many lines do you have? Oh, uh, 27. Yeah, so you're importing 27 Tiddlers. 16 of the Tiddlers we call what? The ones that start on 13 through 28? Those are the sort of your object Tiddlers, right? Yeah. And then Tiddlers in lines 2 through 12, we're going to call your tag Tiddlers. Okay. And in the future exercises working with spreadsheets, I split those into tag Tiddlers and object Tiddlers. So the, 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 if you go back to your Tiddly wiki, in tab two, the um, 16 object tiddlers are the ones that have those names, circle green, square green, triangle blue, and those 16 object tiddlers have those images associated with them. And okay. your, how many did we say, 13 tag tiddlers? Yep. Those are going to be the circle, square, triangle, oval, green, blue, gold, and red. Plus, it looks like there should be one called dimensions imported as well. Okay? Okay. So, if you look at, go back to your spreadsheet and look at the line with the circle tiddler, the title that is line five, and that circle tiddler should be tagged with shape, right? Yeah. Line, column B. Click on that to humor me. There you go. Thank you. And then the text of the circle tiddler is going to say, in, as in line C, tag circle. Okay. Which is going to do what? When you click on circle as a reader, what are you going to see? Uh, you're going to see the shape of the circle. When you click, when you put in the code tag circle, you click on the word circle, you'll see it will provide a set of links for you to which tiddlers? The, the ones with the um, the tag, C, or circle tag. Yep, so, and so, which would be, what? What else is tagged with circle? Circle green, circle blue, yeah. circle gold. Right. So it's gonna be down to 13, like the one of the circle green, circle blue, et cetera. Plus it will give you a link to the tiddler called circle, which of course you're already beyond, so who cares? Okay. Um, the, Tiddler called circle is going to have a field called ing URL, image URL. And the value of image URL for this Tiddler circle will be what? Uh, I have no idea. So what's the value in D5? Oh shit. Uh, no image? Yes, it will have the value of no image. Okay, because fields can have values of anything. Values of fields can be links, they can be code, they can be whatever you want them to be. Paragraphs, books, I don't know, right? So what's the difference between the Tiddler called color and the Tiddler called circle? Um, the, the tag, I guess. Yep, color is going to be tagged to dimension and it's going to have the name of the Tiddler tag color, but it's going to have the same value for image URL. Okay. Looking at line 13, circle green, what's that code going to do? Uh, that's going to link to the Tiddler with that image? The text code in C13. Uh, that's going to... Um, uh, post a, a direct link to the thing so that the image shows inside the tiddler and changing the size of the image to the size that you need. Okay, so um, I'm going to be really prickly about language. Um, so it's actually not going to have a link. It's going to display, oh. present, or transclude. It's going to show you that image, which you're yeah. used to doing. I mean, you do that all the time. But that's not. It's, you're not going to build a link to it. If you wanted that 
image to be clickable so that it was a, a link, you'd have to have some more code on it. Um, and I can show you how to do that too, but that's linking as an author, when you write a link, you're imagining that your readers are going to be able to click on it and do something. When you're an author and you transclude something, or embed it, same word, embed and transclude, you, um, you aren't necessarily giving your readers an option to do anything, they're just seeing something. If you give them a little piece of code that they can reveal a transclusion, that's sort of like a link in some ways, but it doesn't allow them to move, it keeps them where they are. It's like opening a secret door that you can see a little bit more and then you close it. And we work with that as transclusions, um, not links. Okay, so now you've got these titlers. Um, have you imported these yet? Yes, I have. Okay, so let's just review what you did. You went file, oh, right there, yep. You go file, uh, download as CSV. Uh, I actually had trouble um, downloading it as a CSV because it wouldn't let me, so I had to uh, go in and manually like set all these up. Yeah, no, we're gonna fix that. Um, so that's good, so save with and hit okay. Oh, wait a second. Um, where, do you have Firefox set to let you, to ask you for a save location? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, so hit cancel, go to Firefox preferences. Uh, On, um, I have no idea where that is. Um, this is not, this is Firefox? Yeah. yeah. Um, it's on save page, maybe? No. Anybody know? What is this? Windows? Yeah. Options. Yeah. Advanced. Um, and, whoa, they moved it. Try general. Um, downloads. Always ask me where to save files. Yep, okay. And now go back to your spreadsheet, file, download as CSV, and save it. So hit OK. And put this in your Dropbox. Um, design right. Um, so back up a, a level and um, put it in Design right. And un unhide your folders. Um, lower left. Oh, okay, yeah, so you've got them. Okay, so is DW spreadsheet a folder? So we'll put that all in there, that's fine. And now name it, instead of naming it sheet two, name it titlers. Really, it's, they're called object titlers, but these are all the titlers. Titlers dot C, no, 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 titlers, and it says type CSV file. So that's your name, tiddlers.csv. That's good. And save it. Okay, so it's probably there. So now go to design right. Um, oh. And I can't remember, was this the version that we had a um, the instructions in it, or did you have to keep bouncing back and forth? I had to keep going back and forth, but I can. Okay, then in this exercise, uh, which is probably on week five. I think you're. I think you're working in week five there. Um, there's a week by week tab on the right that will get you there. Yep, week five. I think you're in week five, and the exercise is called scroll down. Yep. Um, you're actually in week four, aren't you? Yeah, I think so. Yep. Okay. No. It's week three. Wow. You're. There it is. Yep. Um, and then go to the spreadsheet, the Tiddly Table Conversion Tool. Did you? Uh, where'd it go? Oh, yeah, you don't need to. I'm sorry. I'm, this is, I've lost track of this. So go back to Design Right. Where do we do the CSV convert? Where do we introduce that? It's in the next, it's import tiddlers from CSV. 
There it is. That's where that's the one you're working on. Um, CSV to JSON converter tool in step three. Because we just did step two, now you're on step three. So yeah, that's the link you're looking for. Um, yep. Um, there it is. Okay, scroll down. Uh, keep going. Keep going. Step five. JSON. You can click that anyway. CSV to JSON. Up, right up. There, that, there you go. And now download the result. Save it. Same file and don't, you know, you were in the right place. Um, let's name this Tiddlers. You want it, you want it in the next level, you want it in DW spreadsheet folder, you want them right next to each other. Dot JSON. That's weird that it's coming in that way. J S O N. Okay, and save that. That's very strange. Um, let's see. Let's look at your directory, your Windows directory. My what? Um, just that files. So let's look at that. Windows, your Dropbox. Yep. Ooh, can you put it in list mode? Yep, they're there. Okay. So let's go back to your um, Tiddly Wiki and click on the paper clip tool way at the top, not there. So under tools, um, under tools for the Tiddly Wiki, not for the Tiddler. Oh. Yeah. Import. You can click the import button so it shows up. Yeah. And click import. That's not like it. Okay, so this is where you got bogged down? Yeah. See, I've seen that happen before. Um, go back to the CSV to JSON converter. This is the tool. That it cl just click download result again and um, hit open. Let's see what it's doing. So that looks good. Um, no, it Field one, title, tags, text, image URL. Okay, that's about right. Um, do file, save as. Put it in the right spot. Um, and let's keep that file name, convert CSV to JSON. Okay. And go back to your TiddlyWiki again. And hit that paper clip. Um, okay. Oh, I think we got it. Yep. It's a dot text. There we go. It's a dot text. Okay. So go back to your. That's that's a weirdness. Go back to your file. Um, in Word, uh, the directory, sorry, not the file. Um, Jeez. <laughs> Hitler's.json file. Um, I have no idea why that won't open. It's called Hitler's.json. Why is it? Oh, no, do the next one, convert. You're on the wrong file. No, no, cancel. You're in the wrong file. Way up at the top. Convert csv.json. No, in your window, in your Windows directory. So if you 
<laughs> there it is. Have, it's, it's there, so we can like skip this because I have everything. No, but this is an issue that others have and it should, we shouldn't really be dealing with that. Um, somehow it's imported it as a text file. Um, and I well, when you when it's saved, it was a text file originally. Like these, these, like these two are uh, well, they're CSV and JSON files, but they're reading as text files when I open them. Right. So I think that's an issue in your Windows there. So right click on right click on convert CSV JSON and see if you can rename it. And just. Yeah, somehow there's a text in there. It thinks it's a text file. See, it says type text document. I don't know where that's coming from. Um, new properties. And um, see, it's a dot text file. Just have them rename it over again. Yeah, rename it right up on top. It's convert CSV dot JSON. I can't. Up above, retype something in there. That doesn't erase that. Yeah. Yeah. Keep going. Okay. Now give it something about JSON. Um. Anything. Full space. And it's J S O N. And it's got to be a dot J S O N. Yeah. There's a dot right there. Uh, okay. Hit. See if it will change it. Yeah. No, it's still a text document. Yeah, it's still right click on that. Um, I don't know how to change the type of that. We shouldn't have to do this. Any ideas with those people? <sighs> okay. This is the JSON file. It is, Tiddlers? This one is. Okay, so see if that imports. Nope. Um, what I've done when this happens is it's, I've noticed it's sort of a cache issue. Um, so at some level when you, I've had success here closing Firefox, Closing the spreadsheet, deleting the JSONs, and reconverting, um, but and clearing the cache because I think that it's downloading some other version of the file. Now, could we just copy and paste the text file into a tiddler and switch it over to JSON to the tiddler? Maybe, but we shouldn't need to do that. We shouldn't need to use this conversion tool at all. But um, yeah, I'm not going to so. All right, so we're going to stop with you, Tyler, because you're no fun. Okay. And we're going to stop sharing your screen, and we're going to see that Kira can get this to work. Okay. He's more talented than you. I will remember this, Steve. Yes. I, I have no idea. I really don't. Um, so we'll work on that today. You have noticed through the thread a lot of people are saying it's a hit or miss. Yeah, the JSON is hit or miss. Now, going forward into like other weeks, are we going to need to use the JSON file? Because if that's going to become a problem for some people, isn't that going to like stop us from doing things? Yeah. But we have to solve it because you can't, you can't process anything of a decent size without some ability to write tiddlers outside of Tiddly Weepy. I mean, I don't want you writing more than so. Um, yeah, I was supposed to send Jeremy a note about that, which I forgot to do, but I'll tell him that in today that he's got to fix it. It's a, it's a pretty easy fix within TiddlyWiki to just have a native JSON importer. Um, so, okay, so um, he, we're sharing Kira's. Um, so, Kira, if you go to the original. Um, See what I've got here. Just give me one second. Man, see, you guys have like Windows 8 and 10 and shit. I got like Windows 7. Oh, really? Yeah. I hate Windows 10. 
that that shouldn't that matter. Shouldn't because Windows Seven and Ten is the same basic framework. Yeah, that shouldn't matter, but it's possible. I could see if it was XP comparing XP with Windows Seven or Windows Eight or Windows Ten. Those are all three different frameworks. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm gonna do something that's a little dumb. I'm just gonna share a uh, okay. I'm going to share a spreadsheet that I haven't really wasn't really planning to share, but I'm going to do it anyway because Kira's asked the right question, so she gets to. Um, and so I've only tested this once, um, but it'll work. Dropbox, user. and I think that this is beginning to um, address some of the issues. So hopefully it'll be clear. Um, this is for workshop. What's today? 23 February? 24. 24. Is this from last week? This is for next week. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, Kira, go ahead to design, right? Oh, wait, let me, before you do that, let me get a bit of new tab. So now go ahead to design. Right? And it's saved and um, reload it. Don't just click home, do a, a full reload. Let's see if it's newish. Yep, first thing under new. Okay, and then open, go ahead and open that stat. We need. Okay, so um, this is another um, approach, very similar to what we've done before. Uh, we kind of did a little bit last week, but we're going to revisit it again based on the work that you guys have done. Okay, so Tyler, this is moving um, to the next step. Um, instead of working with 16 objects, we're going to work with many, okay? Okay. Um, and so follow along, and what, what I'm asking you to do is to begin to imagine how to build your own multi-sequential narrative. And that's also going to be the topic, uh, to a certain extent, of our, of our conversation today. Okay. So um, this is a demo that allows you to play and surf, or if you want to build it yourself, you can get an empty tid tiddly wiki, and then copy those five tiddlers into your new tiddly wiki and then read the documentation. So I'm going to have um, Kira do that. So go to the first empty edition. And now save this file. And go to multi-sequential. And you can, you can drag from CSV to JSON converter to go. Okay, you can do that. I was going to say, you don't even have to do it. You can just drag right up to the tab, which is cool, too. Okay. Yeah. Like, to the tab. I tried that. It didn't like it. Yeah. Okay, so drag those five tiddlers over. And, uh, one at a time? Yeah, one at a time. Yeah. Okay, so I don't know if you've seen this before, Tyler, but this is, you know, drag and drop. And documentation should be there already. Okay, so import, and now let's just work in this. So what you're doing now is you're working in a um, in your own version, so you can do whatever you want to. Okay, so full screen that, and um, yeah. Okay, so here's always in a hurry. So scroll up to the top, um, and let's look at document. Hello there tells you what to do. And documentation says, read documentation to get started. Okay, so go ahead. So let's look at this, talk a little bit about it. So this is using a template. And Kira, we did a template with you last week, remember? Very <laughs> briefly. Okay, so what a template is, um, is it's a set of instructions 
that interpret the tiddler and say, what should I do with the stuff that I know? What should I do with my feelings? It's a set of display instructions. So a template tells how to arrange the a tiddler on the screen. And in fact, it tells you how to arrange not just the tiddler, but the page and all sorts of other things. But we're just working with object templates. Okay. Tells you how to arrange, like, should I make the title big? Should I have tag pills under there and the date here and the text box there? Or should I put the text box on top and the title on the bottom? That's all driven by a template that you can change. Okay. In fact, it's driven by the template called View Template. So click on this template, multi-sequential narrative. And this, and then when you look at a template, it doesn't look like much, but notice it's tagged with tags view template. So that's how it says, oh, okay, I'm a template, I'm special. And if you edit tags view template, you'll it totally screw things up. So be careful. Okay, edit the code of template multi-sequential narrative. And now you see some where the magic begins. So the first thing that happens, way up at the top, the first thing that happens in a template is, it, is you, you ask a question. Say, hey, is the current tiddler, is current tagged with, in this case, tagged object? If it is, do the stuff below me. If it isn't, keep going. Don't even talk to me. That's a key part of working in TiddlyWiki, and I would argue that it might be a really key part of hypertext in general, because you're always saying, like, well, I've got all this stuff, but what do I do with it? Oh, run it through a template. Make it look like this. And then you've got, I've got all this stuff, what should I do with it? Oh, run it through this template. My hands are in different places now, which you can't see. Um, I forgot that I'm recording this. And it says, oh, the exact same data is going to be framed very differently. Of uh, my reader is, well, or my reader is a Democrat, so I'm going to change all my adjectives to be liberal instead of conservative. Or my reader has indicated that she wants to have a certain level of detail, so I'm going to have everything open for her, as opposed to my reader just wants the facts, the headlines, and doesn't want any detail. So that's how you control or provide for different levels of reader. You can anticipate different reader types. Now, in this case, we're just going to display a tag document. And we're going to say, this is what we wanted to see. So close this. And, um, and so scroll, go to the documentation and our concept piece. Um, yeah, the concept is that, and I'm going to read, which is really boring, but I'll explain as these words. Right? So Tiddler's tag with a tagged object are imported from some spreadsheet. Okay, everybody gets that. That's what we we're trying to do with. Um, Tyler a minute ago. And then every tagged object is given a value on each of three different dimensions. Same thing you did before, but now we're up to three dimensions, not two. Okay, and, we're, and in this case, I'm giving a value to ethnicity, activity, and a theme. Okay. And then when we get to sorting dimensions, they're currently sorted by the Tiddler title. You'll see what this means in a bit, but I want to get through so you've got these ideas in your head. And then the Tiddler captions are currently displayed in the list. We're going to show how that works. But basically, you're beginning to deal with these objects as like a database object, which is a little different than most writers think. But my idea with hypertextual writing is that for some applications, you have to think a little bit like a database program. You have to just have that in your head, which changes the way you run. That's cool. OK. And so Tiddler's tag with a tab object are templated using that template multi-sequential narrative, which affords a reader an opportunity to not give blah, 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 blah. Okay. So let's click on that spreadsheet multi-sequential narrative. And that should be a tip. There it is. Um, there's a link to it, and let's open that spreadsheet. Okay. Um, so this is mine, so make your own copy. And Tyler, you can follow it along at home, right? Mm -hmm. You're doing this? Yep. Okay, good. And you too are doing this, right? Yeah. Are you there? I mean, otherwise you're wasting your time. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's look at the Tiddler list. Uh, make a copy of it. Still waiting. Okay. Yeah. So make your own copy so you can mess with it. And um, 
Yep. Give it, yep, here is, that's fine. Okay. Close mine so you don't. Now everybody's in their own. Yep, okay. Um, so we're still waiting. There should be tabs along the bottom, which for some reason in Kira's I can't see. Um, there we go. Okay. So what these, and I don't have a readme, sorry about that. So there's a set of single tiddlers. In fact, while you're there, name single tiddlers to object tiddlers. And I'll do that in the master. Um, Click on the little arrow to the right. This is just for, yeah, and they're really called object fiddlers. Okay, thank you. So go over to the raw data, because that's where we're going to start. And this is what you know. So this is Kira. Um, this is what you might start with, like if you had a bunch of pictures. Okay. So what I did is I took a series of 180 photographs that Karen krauss munson an IDP grad student who's doing a photo gallery of pictures from the Utica refugee community. I took all of those, and if you if you uh, hit shift down arrow, you'll see you get to line like 180 or something. Shift down. You don't have to copy it. Just hit shift down arrow. It will take you there. Shift down arrow. This, this is what. Oh, try uh, control down arrow. Control down arrow, okay. So I don't know what those last tiffs are, but I just threw them in there. Uh, whatever, I don't care. Okay, so those are a bunch of images, those are her names. They go all the way to the top, control up arrow, take you back to row one. And so then in sequence, I just gave a sequential number. I started with 1,000, so I didn't have to deal with leading zeros. This little database management lesson. Um, tagged object, if you click on C2, a uh, little bit of writing in Excel. And so the formula is equals C1, and it's got dollar sign, so it's constant, always get C1, plus the value of B2. You go down the line, and now it says always get C1, plus the value of B3, etc. Okay, so that's a way, of, that's a spreadsheet work. So now I've tagged object, it's ultimately gonna be my name. And then I wrote a little caption. <laughs> okay, go over to D. And so the caption pulls on the cells F3, G3, and H3. Okay, so if you scroll over to F3, G3, and H3, and you'll see how little I care about content. Um, so I found five ethnicities, Hindu, Bhutanese, Nepali, Bosnian, Burmese, and Somali. Then I just repeated them. And they're beautifully ordered. They have nothing to do with the pictures. Okay, so content and tag, nothing. They're random. And I wanted them to be a little different, so my activities, I only have three, four activities, dancing, eating, playing, singing, dancing, playing, eating, singing, and then three themes, at home, during, ritual is part of a celebration. So if you think about what that does, is that because of the way I built these, like with no attention to content, I can generate stories that are going to be all different. So I've got a Hindu dancing at home, a Bhutanese Nepali playing during the ritual, and a Bosnian eating as part of the celebration, and then somebody else singing at home. And so you see that these are all like, there's no repeats. There, there will be, but there's not, I don't think there's any repeats. I did that purposefully. Okay. Now what you could do in your own spreadsheet is use the same shell, get rid of some rows if you want, if you only want 50 pictures or 100, whatever you want, you can type those tags in with meaning <laughs> as opposed to randomly. Um, and then the other captions will sort of, and you can play with the formulas and captions and change them. Okay. So this is a design to give you an opportunity to import lots of stuff and then see what will happen when you do it. Okay. So if you go to um, tag titlers, I now make titlers I'm sorry, object titlers. I was like, whoa, that's not right. I make titlers go up to the top. Um, no, that's row three. We need row one. Okay. The title of the titler, tagged object 1000. The value of the field called ethnicity is going to be Hindu. The value of the field called activity will be dancing. 
the value of the field called theme will be at home. The text will display the value of the field called object. Okay, the value of the field for that tiddler, bang, bang, object. Okay, the tags for this tiddler, and they're all closed in double brackets, will be tagged object, and then Hindu singing, and Hindu dancing and at home. So it will be tagged with the values of ethnicity, activity, and theme. Uh, since it's all tagged there, is that um, is uh, the formula drawing from somewhere else, or are you actually like typing all this in? Oh, um, what, all right, so what is drawn? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Tyler, is there anything you should learn about me? I don't type. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do, I will spend weeks making this thing work when it would have taken me an hour to type it by hand. But it's the formula and the ability to create an interactive text that I'm after. The first time you make the spreadsheet, it takes a week. The second time, it takes three days. The third time, it takes a minute. Okay, so it's the point of getting to that third and 50th time that I'm interested in. But understanding how to build the spreadsheet is where I learn. Okay, you okay. guys can learn by applying it. You can also build your own if you'd like. Okay, but that was a good question. Um, and then I wrote a caption, totally formulaic. And then I create the object tag, the object content, which actually is an image code. Okay, so if you look at image, if you look at, I'm um, sorry, H2, you'll see it's all based in these constants. Okay, see constant B1, constant B2, the value of raw data, constant B3, constant B4. So click on the constants tab. Yep. And if you had these in your own directory, on your own server, or somewhere else, you could just change line two. If you moved all your images, you just change line two, B2, to something else. So I took all of Karen's pictures and put them in a directory on my own FTP server for SUNY IT. But you can put them wherever you want. If you put them in Dropbox, Dropbox wants you to, unless you pay the 10 bucks a month, We'll give you a public folder. Dropbox makes you save each picture individually, creates a unique URL for it, and then you have to, you, you can't do it on, you can't move them around. So Cloudinary, I think, is in my list. Similar, but SUNY, SUNY IT FTP site is your best bet if you can figure out how to work that, if you want to have a bunch of images. Um, right now I'm using Flickr. Flickr works. Flickr, same thing. Flickr does not allow you to name your images. It gives you a unique embed code for each one. Well, I'm stealing other people's pictures. That's fine. Yeah, so you, that's perfectly fine. Um, you wouldn't necessarily do this, so you'd have to mess with this. Okay. Um, so then go to tag tiddlers. And what I've done is I've created a set of tiddlers for each of my tags. And these are sort of, this was a little complicated to do, but the exercise is important. So I create one called Hindu, one called at home, one called ethnicity. I tag it up, and that's increasingly, uh, if you look at my critique that I wrote last night or yesterday about the, um, the initial uh, or the last set of assignments, people are tagging, and I'm working with the concept of tagging up versus tagging down. To me, tagging up means you have a big category like ethnicity. You have a bunch of things that are different ethnic groups, like Hindu and Bosnian and Somali. So you tag Hindu up to ethnicity. You don't tag ethnicity down with Hindu. I, I think you tag in one direction. I want to explore that with Jeremy, because there was a piece when I used Tiddly Weekend before that lets you see both of those tagging directions. There's a difference between tagging and tagging which I've lost now in this version of Tiddly Wiki. Tiddly Wiki Classic, it was, I could get a handle on it, the difference between Tiddler's tag with this and Tiddler's that are tagging this. You see it's lost again, right? I had it in my mind for a second. Yeah, and Cassandra's out of here. <laughs> yeah, I know, that's fine. And then the text of those Tiddler's is Tagly, which is a, um, a macro that I wrote. You can drag it over. And then, um, Sword I'm not using yet, but it's there. Okay, so go to object tiddlers. Um, file download as CSV. Oh, 
Yes. Um, open and open that in. Yeah, and put that in your Dropbox. Yeah, you should. You should really. Yeah. Um, what are you using? Chrome? Uh, yes. Yeah, go back. I could have just uh, clicked and dragged it into the um, the icon down at the um, the right hand corner because it uh, since it's a direct link to Dropbox, it like automatically saves it there. Yeah. Um, personally, I like to save files when I download them so I know exactly where I put them every time. And it's yeah. a Chrome option. I hate that they put full. You know, and I, I think as a yeah, so um, rename that as something.csv. And the other thing, yeah, I'll call it objectkiddlers.csv. V, as in victory. Okay, and then go back to your, where is it? Um, Looks good, let's try it. So go back to your the wiki that we're just creating in class today. And paper clip toolbar is brought out under in the main toolbar here where I'm touching. Gotta find the first line. Oh you were there. Yep. There's a paper clip down in the main toolbar. Or you can do that. <laughs> there you go. Yep. And it's in Dropbox. Yeah. Oh. Try again. Oh, yeah, you don't, don't want to do that. <laughs> um, hit cancel, yeah. Cancel it to the wiki. You don't want to import it. Now. now, would it be um would it be better if I uh saved the CSV file through Chrome instead of Firefox? Would that allow it to be read as a, a JSON file instead of a a text document? Right. We're gonna see if this works. Okay, so I've lost track of where you are right now. Trying to so. get into Dropbox somehow. Can can, I get yeah. On the shortcut. Yeah. So go back to your um. Go back to your browser. I, I, I can't emphasize this enough. Go back to your browser. Close all your import export things. Hit cancel. Cancel, cancel everything. And set your, is this Chrome? Yeah. So set your browser options. I think it's the hamburger and then it's preferences maybe in Chrome or settings. Settings probably. Jeremy's here. Good. Hey Jeremy. Hi Steve. How you doing? And then um, scroll down for advanced settings in Chrome. It's under advanced and under, keep going all the way down under Downloads somewhere. There, no, yeah, there you go. Um, yep, good. We're going to do a quick import, and um, this is the thing I was supposed to send you an email about last week, Jeremy. So you don't have to do all that again. That's um, you already did that, right? We already did the CSV to JSON, didn't we? No, oh, you did uh, the document to the CSV file. Oh yeah, you got to do the CSV to JSON. I'm sorry, I thought we were the next step. That yeah, no, no, no. You 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 go back to you're right. Back to what? Go back to your Tiddly Wiki. There's a J. Yeah, CSV to JSON link. I thought we were at the next step already. I got all excited. I was way ahead of myself. Week <laughs> um, three. Uh, yeah, multi sequential narrative tiddler. There you go. Scroll down. Implementation. There it is. Import your CSV file. Jeremy, this is the tool that we need to, to, this is where my students are getting totally hung up. So what are you using this, this convert CSV tool to do? CSV to JSON. Uh, if we had a direct import of a CSV, um, 
choose five. It's importing Dropbox again. It doesn't oh, work. we didn't resave your CSV. Go back to your yeah. spreadsheet. Oh, now it's yeah. yeah, just close that. Go back to your spreadsheet. Sorry. Um, not your four by four, the one that we were. Oh, this. The 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 multi sequential. I forget where it is. Wait. Did you close it? Yeah. There it is. You closed it. Yeah, so go to object. Oh, that's that's not your saved version. Um, recently closed. All right, we will pick this stop. Is it in a different browser? I have no idea what you said. No, because she had... Um, there it is. Yeah. There it is. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, different browser. File, download as CSV. And it didn't ask. There it is. It's going to ask. Save it in your Dropbox. So, Jeremy, this is the step that we would love to be able to, once we have a CSV, Import it directly. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I hadn't realized you were going through quite this much pain. Yeah, quite this. But some was okay, but this much is too much. Um, I'll have to find Dropbox. Yeah, I don't know where your Dropbox is here. I sure can. Um, You can just save it on your desktop and then. Um, yeah, desktop is fine. That's ultimately. Yeah. And then just click and drag it to the, the Dropbox um, thing down yeah, at the. the need to be in Dropbox. Ultimately, it does. Okay, so now go back to the tool. There, not that one. Yeah. Now our web is done. Oh no, no internet. Unstable like me. Refresh it. Yeah. Um, so in some ways, Jeremy, what I was wanting to do today was a lot of what Pierre is about to do. <laughs> there we go. So we use this to choose a JSON file or to choose a CSV file. It's still, yeah. I think oh no. I think you need to shift reload this. You need to clear the, and um, I don't know that that's going to do it. I agree with this site. I think it's an issue that this site may have. It seems to. I have to clear my cache sometimes to get it to work. So there's some real. But um, I usually don't have this many troubles. Okay, so let me. Um, oh snap. Yeah, so we will um, get back to Kira's challenge, and she will leave the next workshop full working demo. Okay, I'm going to stop recording and restart. Yes, yeah,